Hey there, Smoke Master D coming at you with another episode of Barbecue Buyer's Guide. This time to portable pallet grills, so tailgater pallet grills. Let's dive in. All right, and I've got you some chapter times here. Uh, if you want to jump ahead any place in this episode, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel for more great content coming your way. All right, and now a note about what's not included. So, um, not tabletop pallet grills. Uh, you see one there from Pallet Pro uh, that don't have legs. There's one that's kind of on the line from Green Mountain Grills, their new track um, that I decided to include anyways. Kind of is and kind of isn't. So, in general, this is just going to be the portable pallet grills, the tailgaters, that have the legs that swing down. Um, another note that I wanted to make is that I'm not going to be including the Rectech Bullseye. I know a lot of people like to use that pellet grill to take around different places. It's fairly mobile. Uh, I just covered it in the Electric Kettle Grills uh, episode. So if you want to check that out, I'll have a link up at the top. All right, and getting down to it, we're uh, going to start off with Pit Boss. So we see that we have Pit Boss 340, and it is $297. I think that's at Walmart. You can buy it online from Walmart. I don't know if you're going to find it in the store itself. I didn't see one when I checked my local Walmart. Uh, and we also have the Pit Boss 260 PSP2 competition series, also known as the Pit Stop Portable Pallet Grill. And that is for $359.99. We're going to take a look at uh, some of their features. So fold-out legs uh, up there in the top left picture. Obviously, the pit stop kind of folds down together, so it's a slightly different folding mechanism. I do believe, however, that they have the same controller now. They've been making the 340 tailgater for quite a bit longer it used to have a an older controller that was not digital uh, but this one is digital but don't let that fool you it's not PID and uh, you know I have an episode on PID controllers so maybe I'll throw that up there but PID is is a very specific way in which controllers work to sort of get to the exact temperature that you want rather than fluctuating uh, above and below it a whole lot more but it is a digital controller. Uh, it still has the P settings uh, the Pit Boss has had. Um, and basically, if you change the P setting, it changes uh, the amount of time before it feeds pellets, which if you have a, a higher P setting, uh, or if you have one that, that makes it so that it goes longer, uh, it's going to create some more smoke as that fuel uh, burns down and starts to smolder. And next, we have that flame broil plate. So that's kind of a standard on Pit Boss. Uh, they even have it in the Pit Stop as well. Uh, but you see that it's the very general kind in uh, the 340 style. Um, and it doesn't have any sort of pull rod. So you just have to get the grates up, maybe with tongs. And uh, also with tongs, you know, slide that flame broil pr plate up and down. Now, the, uh, the Pit Stop over here in the center that center picture it's going to be a little bit easier with that knob you know you pull it and all of a sudden you've got direct heat uh, so that is one upgrade that that extra money is going to get you on the pit stop another one is that second level rack uh, you're going to notice that that really expands uh, the square inches for the pit stop uh, the bottom rack is also going to be cast iron it's also uh, porcelain coated cast iron which is going to make it so that it's not going to rust as much. It's going to be much more durable. So if you have cast iron porcelain coated, it would probably be the best for that. Had some that wasn't uh, for some grades, and it was sort of a pain to clean. Now, um, another thing that I really actually like for this pit stop is a latching hood and hopper. Um, you know, so this... Uh, elevates this this pit stop up a little bit higher, even than some of some of the other highest uh, are the the most expensive ones on this list. Uh, I think that if you're going to have something portable, 
those latches to keep everything from clanging around is probably a really good idea. The one large ding for this this pit stop is that it does not have a pellet dump. So if you want to take it somewhere and you've already got pellets in it, uh, you're going to have to scoop them out of, of the back where uh, you, know, you put the pellets or you're going to have to vacuum them out. So um, that is not really the greatest thing for a portable pellet grill. The other thing that I guess I forgot to mention is I couldn't find anywhere saying that probes came, especially with this 340. Um, does it come with a probe? Does it not? If you know, put it down in the comments. We love to, to work as a community in, in Barbecue Buyer's Guide. Uh, I looked uh, through the original 340s whole manual and I couldn't see that it actually came with probes. So if you want the probes and it it does say in the manual only to use pit boss probes. Imagine that. Um, they're $19.99 on pit boss's website. Also the cover $39.99. Uh, I did not see any accessories specifically for the pit stop. Um, maybe I should have looked in, into the probe situation on that as well. It may have been the same, um, but if you do buy it and it comes without probes, $20 isn't too much. Um, or maybe you have your own sort of thermometer and don't want to use uh, the one inside. Um, so uh, maybe it's a non-issue for you. All right. Um, I didn't mention it before, but I am going in the order of lowest cost grill per manufacturer uh so that 340 um with the sub 300 number for pit boss was uh the first now we have the davy crockett at 359 um which is a little bit less than the trek which is 379 really very close pricing on these two um and truthfully they're not super different um, you know, just from what you can see here, uh, the Davy Crockett has that shelf uh, with the, the hooks, whereas the Trek does not. Um, it seems that they decided to make this new Trek to be more of a tabletop or partially a tabletop, especially with those little legs. Um, but you can see that it's in almost every other regard. It's basically the same thing as the Davy Crockett, except for those legs. And one other important thing that we're going to going to get to in a second. All right. Now, that other thing that I was just mentioning was the sliding heat plate. So it looks to be very much the same heat plate as in the Davy Crockett. You can see it up there in the, the top left. But when you look at that top center picture, you see that sort of hook coming out of that. Um, that goes into the chamber that connects to the heat plate in the track and only on the track, not the Davy Crockett. But with that, you can actually move that heat plate and then, um, you know, act, I imagine create a hot spot on that left part of the grill. Uh, if you wanted to do some grilling that was a little a little more di direct, the drip pan is still going to be there. So it's not exactly direct, but you can create that hot spot to, to grill at higher temperatures, maybe do, do a little searing. So that could be uh, just what you're looking for. Now, the uh, controller is going to be the same. You see that in the bottom uh, middle, and it has a one, one temperature probe. It does connect via Wi-Fi. And you can also supposedly control the smoke. I didn't see any smoke setting on on this controller per se. Um, you know, since it's Wi-Fi, it connects to your phone, maybe it's there. Not entirely sure. This thing is PID, and part of it being PID is the fact that it is powered with DC power instead of AC power. And you see that it can um, has that 12 volt connection for like your car or whatever. Uh, I've heard of people powering these things with solar panels. Um, I don't think that you can power it off of your car battery, like for a really long cook. So uh, without, you know, turning the engine on at some point. Uh, but the DC power thing allows 
variability in the fan and the auger in a way that isn't possible with AC. AC, basically, it's on or it's off. When you have uh, DC power, though, you can make uh, a motor go faster or slower by increasing uh, the power to it, the DC power. There's just a difference in how that electricity works. So a lot of the higher end pellet grills are going to DC power. And this uh, Green Mountain Grills Trek, and I believe also the Davy Crockett, are that DC power so that it can can really dial in what you want with those motors. But it also comes with a regular plug and alligator clip connections if you just have like a car battery that you wanted to use. And now we've got the accessories. So they do have a pizza oven for this thing. It's it's pretty small, so it's got to be a small pizza, but $99.95. A cover for uh, the Davy Crockett, $44.99. I suppose it would go over the Trek. Uh, upper Rack, $29.99. Saw a YouTube video of somebody that had, you know, an aftermarket Upper Rack that looked like it was a little bit better quality than this one. But I'm not entirely sure where you get that. It seemed like the guy selling them was out of uh, California somewhere. Um, this Trek cart uh, is really part of the whole conception of the Trek. Right. So it's like tabletop. But if you want it to be have, you know, like a regular grilling situation, you get this trick cart for two hundred forty nine ninety five. And all of a sudden it's up there and looks like sort of a regular grill. You can roll around your patio or, or wherever out of your garage. Um, all stainless steel. Uh, again, you know, the Green Mountain Grills, I believe, is four thirty stainless steel in that hood. Um, which isn't as good as the the three um, three hundred four, but still good nonetheless. Uh, I'm not sure what the the Trek card is, but I imagine it might be the four thirty as well. Four thirty is magnetic, so if you have uh, thermometers that are magnetic, you can just stick them down there on that, uh, and they'll be safe and and stuck on. So could be something you actually wanted. It has that shelf there? Uh, uh, I like the cart. If, uh, if you get the trick, makes it even more versatile. So, and now going on to Camp Chef, right? Um, this is the Camp Chef Pursuit portable pellet grill. Uh, folds down, as you see there on the bottom right. Let's take a closer look. So, bottle opener. Hey, I think this is the only one with a bottle opener. So, if you like uh, sitting back with a beverage while you wash the smoker, uh, maybe this is the one for you. Uh, definitely, you know, for something that has the name Camp Chef on it and going camping, I, I like the bottle opener part of that. Uh, it's not huge on how it actually works, though. So, let's talk about some of the other things. Um, this thing is PID. It has smoke control too. So, you know, just like uh, these other ones, even even the pit boss with the P settings, uh, not really like the pit boss, but sort of like the Green Mountain Grill, this PID, it's going to allow you to dial in how much smoke you want versus how much temp control. Unfortunately, you can't really have both at the same time, uh, but that is it is what it is. And it looks like this controller does that pretty well. No connectivity, you know, if you really are taking this thing camping, uh, unless you are planning on using a mobile hotspot, you know, I don't know that that would work anyway. It has two probe holes. I believe it comes with two probes. So that was, that's nicer. Uh, I really like uh, that dial design. Um, I think that looks nice there. You know, you just turn the thing. Um, look at the ash clean out on the bottom. This is the first one um i think this is the only one that has that that cup style uh in all the ones that we're going to look at today so that uh, makes it easier you're not going in there with a vacuum cleaner uh and and if you're out out in a camper rv are you gonna have a shop vac with you so i think that that is i like that i like that a lot full latching so it kind of looks like a, a old lunch box you know old metal lunchbox it latches down take this thing uh out on the road uh it's gonna gonna stay closed for you so um leg leveling 
We're going to see some more leveling in a second, but uh, here's where we're going to see it first. So, you know, if you're you're going to be out there on ground that's not entirely level, you can make make it level. Give yourself that stability that you need out in out in the wilderness, you know. Um, full upper shelf. See, it looks like uh, some nice stainless steel there. Uh, the sliding grill. OK, so this is their searing plan. And if you look at the bottom picture, you see that uh, drip pan that has sort of those serrations and holes. I'm going to light that part up for you uh, just a little bit. Uh, it kind of distorts it a little bit, but you can see it's got those divots that come up and have um, so that fire. When you when you pull back that slide um, right where the, the fire pot is, that direct heat's going to come up on that plate and through somewhat in those little holes there uh, on those bumps. Okay, so if you wanted to sear, uh, maybe this thing would be able to do that for you with that slide feature. Okay, it's kind of like the, the Pit Boss um, broil plate, but a little bit different, you know, and I think it would work just as well. But at the same time, you still have that heat diffuser aspect of having like a plate over it, uh, diffusing the heat out throughout the grill. So I, I think that it kind of gives you the best of both worlds in that regard. Uh, and you can have more even temps as well as that hot spot when you need to pop that up and give you that sear. All right. And now we've got um, just a couple of accessories here. Carrying bag for $79.99. Uh, so, you know, if you want to carry it out and have it covered over that way. Uh, and then the cover th for $36.99. I suppose the carry bag is more. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe it's more specialized. And now we've got Traeger. Um, so this one is $529.95. Um, yeah. And let's see what we have for Traeger here. Okay. So, um, yeah, the first thing there, ProPort. Has a heat deflector, um, but I couldn't find any actual pictures of it on their website, so I had to go to the manual. There's a drawing of their heat deflector there. I like to to see the innards of of grills, especially these these pellet grills. Um, now there's a single rack. You see that in the middle picture, um, and that drip pan. You can see that there's a spout that's actually connected to that drip pan and there's a a slot for it and if you look at the bottom picture with that spout for uh, the grease that is actually part of the drip pan and goes through that little slot it's an interesting design choice i'm not entirely sure what i think about it i don't know if it makes it more sturdy or stable in there or why exactly you would want to do it that way rather than any other way. Um, you see the knobs for the legs. So you just unhook the knobs and and then make, uh, make the legs go down and tighten them back up. Uh, the controller there, uh, digital elite controller. It's not PID. It, uh, you know, has those swing temps. Uh, it's not entirely dialed in like some of the PID ones. There's no connectivity uh, like some of the previous ones and cheaper ones that we've just seen. There is a keep warm feature that holds at 165. Out of all the, the things about the controller, that's probably the thing I like most. Um, but 165 isn't super low, but I guess it is what it is. Uh, it comes with a probe. You see that little probe place for it and the probe port on the other side of the screen and accessories we've got a cover for 59.95 and a folding front shelf for 59.95 and uh barbecueguys.com is where i got that price also these pictures are from barbecueguys.com i don't know why there were there were no really good pictures of the traeger uh tailgater grill but I had to go to Barbecue Guys. They have they they must take their own pictures, but they seem to have 
you know, better media for all their products overall. Um, and I just couldn't go with what I had from Traeger or other outlets. I had to use these ones. Uh, and it seems like Barbecue Guys does a great job of uh, communicating what products can can do. Uh, so since I'm using their photos, I may as well throw them a plug. Uh, I think that they uh, go the extra mile on on showing stuff that way and uh maybe with communicating with with customers so out of all the online retailers that are you know secondary retailers uh i like those guys i'm just gonna say that now gorilla grills gorilla grills they only sell direct <laughs> but um they've got the chimp portable wood pellet grill and it is 599 dollars all right and um, so we're going to take a look at that. We see that we have uh, the latch there for the hopper and that top left picture. Um, we have an upper left level half rack uh, and stainless steel grates, a lot of stainless steel inners. Um, there's a bar that they have on the bottom grate. You see that there that will stop it from rattling. I think there were also some divots kind of in the back. So it's going to keep uh, a lot of these components in place when you're transporting this thing. So overall, um, some good stuff. Now, uh, the, the controller on this thing is Wi-Fi. It is PID or Pro mode, okay? So say that you like having more smoke and more swing in the temps, you can just change it to Pro mode. Say you want more stable Temperatures, but less smoke. Switch to PID. Okay, it has a meat probe. Um, you can just change the settings on the go. So really easy that way. Um, utensil hooks there. Um, and then the adjustable tabletop feet. So, you know, the thing about these portable grills, and, you know, we saw it on the track. You want it to stand up or if you want it to go down, most of these, you can have it down and just use it, but this one really puts the whole tabletop feature or say it's on uh, your truck bed. Now, I don't know if, if that's recommended just because you don't want to melt a truck bed. So, uh, you know, definitely read the manual before you do anything like that. But it looks like this thing with the, the tabletop feet is, is able to adjust and so that you can keep it um, like a tabletop pellet grill, but much bigger than all the other ones that are, are just tabletop grills, uh, tabletop pellet grills. So uh, this thing could pull double duty that way for you. And maybe that's uh, what you're looking for. Uh, but one thing, that middle tabletop uh, foot thing there, you see that hole? So that is, you punch the little, the button thing and it snaps into that hole. And I believe that is the method by which you put the legs up and down. So button push rather than, you know, the knobs or whatever else. And here, you know, almost all of Gorilla Grills, pellet grills have this double wall feature for uh, the bottoms and the firebox area. Uh, and that is going to give you some air gap insulation and make your pellet grill more efficient. Uh, it helps a lot in winter uh, and in cold places. So um, if that is one of your concerns, this Gorilla Grills Chimp may be what you want to go for. All right. And more accessories than any, any that we've seen so far. Jerky rack there for $89.99. Uh, Front shelf, it looks stainless for $84.99. Cover for $49.99. Pizza stone, you know, you want to make a pizza out there, $25.99. The grill grate set, if you want to get a sear. Uh, you may have noticed that there was no direct heat option in the grill. So those grill grates may be really good for helping concentrate that heat for your sear. So $57.99. And then the Pimp My Chimp for $29.99. And I don't know, this rubs me a little bit the wrong way, especially the cord hanger, which is part of it. So it's two pieces, one piece, 
is the cord hanger. The other, I think you take your handle off there and you slide that chimp plate with the vent. Uh, and the vent apparently makes your smoke go up instead of over into your face. Uh, part of me feels like, especially the cord hanger, should just come with the with the chimp. I'm not entirely sure about the vent, but the cord hanger, definitely. Uh, so that is one bone that I pick with this chimp. Um, you know, my cheap pit boss pellet grill that I have came with a cord hanger. If you're going to spend that much money on a pellet grill, I really feel like it should come with it. That's that's my feeling on this this accessory. All right. And lastly, we have the Rectech Road Warrior 340P. I think this thing's pretty new. Um, it is $599 as well. So the same same price as the chimp. And uh, it has a cord hanger. I put that that picture in the top left just because <laughs> the chimp doesn't have one. Look, there's a cord hanger for free. <laughs> Not free. It's, you know, part of the grill. Uh, pro port there. Um, the screw knob folding system. That knob is connected to a, a pin that just goes up that little design to where it's standing. Then you see you've got the stainless steel uh, inner components, including that drip pan and the rack. PID controller, it doesn't have any connectivity, and it has one probe. Okay. And these are some of the um, accessories that we have with it. So, you know, the grill grate kit again for searing, $79.98. Small flat top griddle, if you want to throw that in there, $49.98. And a small interior shelf uh, for $39.98. Not much room under that thing, so whatever you're cooking on the bottom better be short. <laughs> All right. And now it's time for charts. All right, so we got prices. Um, and you see, it just kind of goes up like we did, uh, 297 for the PV340, uh, Davy Crockett at 359, Pit Boss Pit Stop, um, 359.99, uh, the Trek, then the Pursuit, Traeger, Chimp, and, uh, the Rectech there equal at the top. Then hopper size. So that's something I didn't talk about before. Uh, you know, hopper size determines how long you can cook without refueling. And when you're making something portable like this, it's going to be on the small side. That 340, though, that five pound hopper is very small. Eight for the Traeger, nine for the Trek and, and Davy Crockett, 10 for the Pursuit, 14 for the Rectech, 15 for the Chump. And 19 for that pit stop, which, you know, hey, you got to get your pluses where you can. All right. And this is the inches that are squared for the main rack. I like to, to look at the main rack number instead of all together. I look at both, but I look at the main rack just to help you get an understanding of the size of the chamber itself. So that Davy Crockett and Trekker are the smallest with 219. Pit stop after that with 253. Pursuit after that with 253 as well. Traeger with 300. Then the uh, Pit Boss 340 with 340. And the Chimp with 340 as well. And then the Rectech also with 340. So 340, really popular number up there at the top end of, of chamber size. Okay. And then dollar per inch is squared for the main rack. So that Pit Boss 340 is coming in with the best inches uh, for main select for dollar. Of course, it's really cheap. Um, the controller and, and everything about it is the lowest sort of complexity. And then you've got the Pit Stop after that. Then uh, Green Mountain Grills, uh, the Davy Crockett and the Trek, the Chimp, and uh, the Rectech actually... At, at the very same level there, then the trigger, then the pursuit. 
All right, then inches squared all. Those uh, Green Mountain Grills still down there. Of course, you can buy that secondary rack. I didn't include that in here. Uh, Traeger 20 after that. Pit Boss 340. Then we've got the Pit Stop. So it jumped up a little with that uh, second level rack. Then the Chimp. Then the Pursuit is almost at the top here. And then that Rec Tech with 510. Okay, so the dollar per inch is square total. The the pit boss 340 still down there in first place. Pit stop after that added those inches in the second second rack. The pursuit, however, has made the most gain with adding the second rack. Um, the rec tech next, then the chimp, uh, the Green Mountain Grills, and then Traeger in last place. All right, temperature range. So uh, these are settings and reportings from companies. Uh, the Green Mountain Grill, they're, they're the same. It's 150 to 550. The Pursuit, 160 to 500. Uh, Pit Boss, 180 to 500. Traeger, 180 to 450. Of course, it has that warm setting that was at 165. Uh, the Gorilla Grills Chimp at 180 to 500. And Rectech, 200 to 700. Um, and I would like to see actual data on that because they, uh, Rectech says that they get the hottest in, in a lot of different areas. Maybe they do. Um, you know, uh, the rest of these, if you get those grill grates, they're supposed to get you that heat for searing. So how important is it to get all the way up to 700 degrees? I'm not sure. But if it does work, you know, I guess that is a feather in Rectech's cap. Weight, uh, 57 for the Davy Crockett, 60 for the Traeger, 63 for the Trek, 80.2 for the Pit Stop, 82 for the Pursuit, uh, the Rectech at 87, the Chimp at 90, Pit Boss uh, 340 up there at 93. Now, weight is a strange thing. Usually, I'm thinking about weight as in material, as in the more, the better uh, heat retention. We're talking about something that you want to be able to move around and be portable. Uh, you could look at, at at it in the opposite way, right? Maybe you're looking at that Davy Crockett and, and thinking to yourself, man, that'll be the easiest one to move around. That's the way I want to go. So uh, it's an interesting like a paradigm shift that you have to make for, for these portable grills. All right. All right, and now on to my thoughts on these pellet grills. We're going to start with the Traeger Tailgater. Um, I feel like the features on this thing are very general. Um, and I really also think it shouldn't be one of the more expensive grills on this list. Uh, Traeger has been trying to coast on their name and brand at the lower end of the pellet grill market for quite a while without much substance to justify their price. At the higher end, their prices might be more justifiable, but that's also debatable. You know, maybe maybe I'll do a, a Traeger, <laughs> a Traeger episode, just Traegers. Um, the one possibly redeeming quality of this grill is it's lightweight, but it's so roundly beaten by, I think, the Green Mountain grills in particular that are about the same weight that just can't really credit it. Um, I wouldn't get this pellet grill. And I think it's in need of a serious upgrade or price reduction. One of those two. Uh, now, the Chimp. I mostly like everything about the Chimp. Um, you know, except what I said about the cord hanger thing. I think that's cheap. But on the pro side, there's a lot of good things. Um, you know, especially if you're in a cold climate and intend to be grilling out in the cold. Uh, that double wall is, is really great. The ability to turn it into a tabletop pellet grill, I think, makes it more versatile than maybe some of its competitors, and maybe that's your thing. Um, you know, you can you can do it with all of them. Really, you can just you know put the put the legs down and and grill where you want with it. But I like those legs. I think that that's a nice touch. It has some nice accessories that go along with it, so so that's a plus. Um, yeah, changing between modes on the controller, I've always. Ever since they came out with that from Gorilla Grills, I've been a fan. In general, I'm a Gorilla Grills fan. So I like the chimp in that way too. Uh, now the camshaft 
pursued. Uh, there's a lot to like about this grill too, though. Um, for its price, there's a lot there. Great controller, latches are great. Second level rack makes the capacity good, but not super great. Um, you know, it's 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 a portable grill, so you have to kind of give it that. I like uh, the slide in here and the ash cup bottle opener. Um, I get the feeling that if I were going on a camp camping trip. Uh, the camp chef has kind of that, I don't know, the style of, of campiness, <laughs> you know, it, it looks like camping gear. Uh, I like, I like that about it. Uh, whereas the others are, you know, they're trying to be grills and this is like, you know, yeah, this is, this is your camp stuff. Um, rec tech. So when I looked at this, this rec tech, um, you know, portable grill, I was waiting to be wowed and then never really was felt like the standout feature was supposed to be how easily it folds up and down with that kind of weird design thingy. I just didn't feel like that was enough though. Um, at the same price, like the gorilla chimp has a, I feel like, uh, I like their controller better. Uh, I like the double wall firebox and they, they both have a lot of stainless steel. Uh, that high temp is possibly that one advantage, but again, I'd like to see the proof. And again, I wonder how, how helpful it is. Um, with, you know, you get those specialized grill grates. Uh, I'm not sure how much those extra temps really add to it. Uh, you know, if that's your thing, if you like, like that really hot sear, maybe that's the way you want to go. Uh, I don't think it would be for me though. Now the pit boss, the 340 is about as cheap and simple as it gets. And if you're on a really tight budget, maybe that's that's for you. Um, between the two pit bosses, though, I definitely go with the more expensive pit stop. Um, one, if only for that larger pallet capacity. And I like the sleek design. I like the look. Uh, but that's just me. Green Mountain Grills. Um, they really owned the corner on this market for quite some time with that Davy Crockett. And they still compete really well here. The ability to power from your car if need be. Um, I, don't, I didn't really see that anywhere. Now you can get, you know, stuff that would make it so that you could um, have an outlet that you could charge from your car. So there are uh, appliances that make that happen, right? But the, the thing that you can just do it naturally they give you that now i did hear that if you like hit that cord the wrong way that uh your your grill's gonna turn off um so maybe maybe it's not always the best idea or maybe you just need to make sure nobody hits it or touches it comes with wi-fi and pid uh not a whole lot of capacity but you know if if you're not with a huge group or or whatever i think you'd still do a pork butt you can feed a lot of people with a pork butt so you know um recap if i wanted one with uh the most space to probably get the grill chimp if i wanted something medium size i'd probably go with the camp chef if I wanted something small and the most portable i'd probably go with the green mountain grills if i wanted something cheap uh but a little bit bigger i might try the pit boss pit stop now, those are my thoughts. As always, uh, you have your own thoughts. Please add those to the comments. If you have any of these grills, add your reviews to the comments. Uh, you know, help us all out to make the right decision. Uh, you know, I hope that you uh, enjoy some of these products, make some really great barbecue. And as always, go get your smoke on.